The financial secretary expects the pace of Hong Kong's economic growth in the second quarter to be slower than the first quarter. Police arrest the mother of a 12-year-old boy who was abandoned at a public hospital. And Moscow comes under a drone attack again, and Russia launches new airstrikes on Ukraine's capital. Hello and welcome to TVB News. Sources say the mother of a 12-year-old boy who was abandoned at Kuang Wa Hospital earlier this month arrived in the city last night via high-speed rail. She was arrested under suspicion of child abuse and will appear in court tomorrow. Authorities reportedly contacted the mother, who was residing in the mainland, after her son was found abandoned on July 21st. She said she would willingly return to the city within 10 days after sorting out some visa-related issues. The 37-year-old suspect, surnamed Chen, acquired her visa yesterday with the help from the Hong Kong police and Guangdong authorities. She arrived at West Kowloon Station at around 10.30 p.m. last night. Preliminary investigations indicate the mother abandoned her son at the hospital after hearing about the city's better quality of education. She returned to the mainland on the same day. The city's gross domestic product estimates for the second quarter will be announced tomorrow. Financial Secretary Paul Chan says he expects the pace of growth to slow down a bit compared to the previous quarter. But overall, the economy is on track for improvement. Timothy Lee tells us more. Hong Kong's economy has experienced gradual recovery since the city returned to pre-pandemic normalcy. Earlier, the government set the gross domestic product growth target for this year at 3.5 to 5.5 percent. This, as GDP growth in the first quarter reached 2.7 percent. In his blog post on social media, Financial Secretary Paul Chan said the pace of growth in the second quarter may be slower than that of the first quarter. But he emphasized that overall, the economy is on the right track. Chan said among the SAR's three financial pillars, private consumption served as the main source of support for the economy in the previous quarter. Retail sales also saw a year-on-year -year increase of 24 percent in the first quarter of the year, while April and May alone reported a 17 percent rise. The total revenue of restaurants in the second quarter to be announced on Thursday is expected to continue its upward trajectory, maintaining an average revenue of $9 billion a month. Exports, however, saw a downturn primarily due to external factors, having continued a decrease for two consecutive quarters and dropping by 13 percent year-on-year during the second quarter. Goods exported to the mainland, the U.S., the European Union and other Asian markets all reported a decline. Fixed asset investment also saw signs of a slowdown recently. The stock exchange's average daily trading volume in the second quarter declined by 20 percent compared to the first quarter. The financial secretary said the central government has made plans to increase residents' consumption and stabilize foreign trade during last week's Politburo meeting. He said that would give a boost to the mainland's economy, which would also help various sectors of the Hong Kong economy. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Under Secretary for Health Libby Lee said psychiatric patients must meet certain requirements to be discharged conditionally. Lee's comment came after the government proposed to extend the conditional discharge mechanism by covering patients who are admitted voluntarily, such as those with a medical history of committing criminal violence. Mimo Singai has more. With mental health issues receiving more attention in the city, the government has to step up its effort in improving policy for mental health patients. Under the current mental health ordinance, the conditional discharge system only applies to patients who are under compulsory detention and with a medical history of criminal violence or detention to commit violence. Those patients will be supervised for about 7.5 years after they have been discharged. Speaking on the TVB program, Under Secretary for Health, Le Bili stressed that patients who are admitted to hospitals voluntarily will also need to fulfill certain requirements. If these criteria are not met, they actually will be 
admitted back to the hospital. For example, they have to stay in a certain kind of residential area, uh, that, like a supervised home, so that it will be clarified in the discharge order uh, per patient situation. Another criteria probably will be the drug compliance. The next one is about the follow-up. They have to come back to see the doctor regularly. Speaking on the automatic refill system, a suggested mechanism to revoke the conditional discharge order for each patient, Lee explained why authorities set the refill frequency for each case to once at least every two years. We should have a longer period of observation before we can conclude that they are OK in the community. So two years, basically, we think is the appropriate time, long enough to observe whether the situation of the patient in the community is stable. The health authority added the ultimate purpose of streamlining the scheme is to protect patients' rights and public safety. Mimosa 9, TVB News. Overseas, Russia launched new drone attacks on the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, hours after shooting down enemy drones over Moscow. No immediate reports of damage or injuries in Kiev, but Russian officials say a building was damaged in Moscow's business district as three Ukrainian drones were brought down over the capital. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia may host a peace summit early next month. Nasvi Karim has more. Russia's repeated messages to its citizens since its invasion of Ukraine has been, we are in full control. But as the conflict enters its 18th month, the tentacles of war are reaching deeper into Russia territory, with the capital Moscow becoming increasingly vulnerable. Russia's defense ministry says it took down three drones today, the fourth attack on the capital this month and the third in a week. The latest attack caused minor damage to a building in Moscow's business district, with no injuries reported. Moscow is describing the incidents as Ukrainian terrorist attacks. Kiev has so far declined to comment on attacks inside Russia, insisting its priority is to liberate territory in the east and south. Russia's response was to launch drone attacks on Kiev a day after hitting this building in Sumy, with reports of one death and five wounded. Elsewhere, Russia says it hit military targets in Dnipro using high-precision weapons. Ukraine says the missile strike damaged a residential complex and a security service building, injuring nine people. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal reported that Saudi Arabia will host talks in its port city of Jeddah on August 5th and 6th to discuss ways to end the war. The report says senior officials from up to 30 countries would attend, including Ukraine, India, Brazil and South Africa, along with a high-profile representative of the Biden administration in Washington. This after Russian President Vladimir Putin concluded a Friday meeting in St. Petersburg with African leaders to discuss their peace plan. Putin also attended a naval parade in St. Petersburg as Russia celebrated its Navy Day. He said the Russian Navy would receive 30 new ships this year. In Kyiv, families of Mariupol defenders killed or injured in an attack on a prison held a memorial to observe its one-year anniversary. In July 29th last year, an explosion ripped through a hangar housing around 200 prisoners of war in Olenivka, with Russia saying 53 Ukrainians died and under 75 injured. Both sides blamed each other for the attack. Nazvi Karim, TVB News. Russian President Vladimir Putin said he would not attend next month's BRICS Economic Summit in Johannesburg, South Africa. Putin met his South African counterpart Cyril Ramaphosa in St. Petersburg on Saturday, saying he will closely follow the meeting in late August via video link. South Africa is a signatory to the International Criminal Court, which has an arrest warrant out on Putin. Putin and Ramaphosa discussed bilateral relations and cooperation within BRICS and the UN. And the UN. Premier Li Chang is expected to attend the BRICS meeting. As for Ramaphosa, he described Friday's Russia-Africa summit as most successful, adding, we have got a declaration that can take our relationship between Africa and Russia forward. The New York Times has reported that U.S. officials are searching for Chinese malware hidden in various defense systems, an allegation that Beijing has denied. The report says the Biden administration believes malicious computer code has been hidden inside networks controlling power grids, communication systems and water supplies that feed military bases. This has heightened fears that Chinese hackers could disrupt U.S. military operations in the event of a conflict between the U.S. and China. 
One official was quoted as saying that the malware is a ticking time bomb that could allow China to cut off power, water and communications to military bases, slowing deployments and resupply operations. The Chinese embassy in Washington issued a statement on Saturday denying that China engages in hacking. It said Chinese government agencies face numerous cyber attacks every day, claiming that most of the attacks come from the U.S. In Thailand, an explosion at a fireworks warehouse in the southern Naratiwat province killed at least 10 people with scores wounded. Videos posted on social media from the site show a huge plume of smoke over the area and many damaged structures, cars and motorbikes, as well as streets covered with debris. Many of the buildings there have collapsed roofs and walls. Regional officials said at least 118 people were hurt and that residents of more than 200 households were affected. Officials believe there are still a number of people trapped under the debris waiting to be rescued. Reports say the blast was likely ignited by construction work inside the warehouse, such as metal welding. In the South Korean capital of Seoul, one more cat is suspected of having been infected with H5N1. This after two other cats recently died from the virus. Authorities said on Saturday that a cat was taken to an animal hospital due to anorexia and respiratory symptoms. The animal later died. It will take two to three days to find out if it was infected with bird flu. Earlier, a separate cat shelter was placed under quarantine after H5N1 was detected in two cats, which also died. It is the first time since 2016 that uh, avian influenza has been detected in cats in the country. Authorities say there have been no reported cases of H5N1 in humans in South Korea. Earlier this month, at least 29 sick cats across Poland tested positive for H5N1. Still ahead, Coup leader is in Niger under pressure from African and Western countries to release the president they removed from office. KMB's first batch of electric double-decker is now in service. Welcome back. West African leaders are meeting in Nigeria today to discuss what to do about the coup in nearby Niger. They could decide to close the borders and cut Niger off financially. The military removal of President Mohamed Bazoum in Niger on Wednesday has been criticized by neighbors and Western partners. The leaders who have taken over have warned against any outside intervention. David Garrett explains. President Mohamed Bazoum, elected two years ago as Niger's leader, the first peaceful democratic transfer of power since independence from France in 1960. But now the military has taken over control. The head of the presidential guard, General Abdurrahmani Tishani, announced he is running Niger's government. His forces detained the president and removed him from office. Bazoum is believed to be safe, unharmed, but no longer in charge. He seemed to be uh, uh, at his home and he seemed to be fine, but we want to reiterate here the appeal of the Secretary General in terms of uh, the caution, the, 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 the need to release him the soon as possible. The United Nations condemned the move by the junta, but those now in power say the removal of Bazoum was because he was failing to deal with jihadist insurgents. Huge blow to many in the international community who saw Niger as one of the last hopes as a country they could partner with in the Sahel. It's one of the last democratic run countries in the Sahel and people were throwing millions of dollars of military aid and assistance into Niger in order to help them beat back the jihadi threat. The European Union and France have already cut off financial support and the United States has threatened to do the same. Our economic and security partnership with Niger, which is significant, hundreds of millions of dollars depends on the continuation of the democratic governance and constitutional order that has been disrupted uh, by 
uh, the actions in the last uh, in the last few days. Niger is poor. The country is ranked in the bottom 10 nations in GDP. Its 25 million people receive close to 2 billion US dollars a year in aid. These pictures from the capital, Niamey, show calm on the streets, but there is fear underneath. This economist, Abdoulaye Soli, believes the coup could bankrupt Niger. He says external funding will come to a halt. Development projects financed by the EU, World Bank, IMF are finished. Aid will be stopped. We need to take control. West African regional bloc ECOWAS hopes to find a way forward at an emergency summit in Abuja. Those who are now in control in Niger have already said they believe the meeting is designed to make a plan of aggression and they'll defend Niger. Yevgeny Prigozhin says his private army, the Wagner Group, is ready to help. David Garrett, TVB News. In the U.S. state of Wisconsin, two separate plane crashes left four people dead and two injured. That came as a small aircraft crash landed in the water off a crowded beach in New Hampshire. This report from NBC News. Tonight, chaos in the sky. Within hours, multiple aviation crashes across the country. Near Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, this plane towing a banner crash landed around noon in the ocean. Four of an aircraft in the water out of the main beach. It was like something out of a movie. Adam Bagney was there with his family. It hit nose first, the tail went up over the cabin, and then it fell back down. People were screaming. The pilot seen swimming to safety. The lifeguard brought the pilot, which is the only occupant, to shore. We're evaluating them now. And the pilot did a remarkably great job in knowing that they didn't want to land on the beach because it was full of people. Two crashes also happening in Wisconsin, the first this morning into Lake Winnebago. The Coast Guard says a T-6 Texan plane like these was maneuvering before rapidly descending from an altitude around 3,000 feet. Rescue crews are still searching for the two occupants. It happened not far from the EAA Air Venture Show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the largest air show in the world, where this afternoon, two aircraft similar to this small helicopter and a gyrocopter like this collided. Officials say this was not related to the show. When you have an air show of this size, Unfortunately, it is it is not that uncommon that each year that there's some form of accidents because uh, there I mean there are thousands upon thousands of airplanes up there. It's still unclear how many people may be hurt or how they're doing tonight. Dana Griffin, NBC News. Kowloon Motor Bus's first electric double decker entered into service today. The neon green colored bus is manufactured by mainland auto giant BYD. The double-decker currently only offers services between Ontai Estate at Sao Mao Ping and Lambton Station on the 213M route. Can be announced that a total of 52 electric buses will enter into service by the end of this year, adding they will expand operations to urban areas beyond just development zones. The company aims to replace its 4,000-strong bus fleet with electric vehicles by 2040. That is the news. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.